Welcome to Nerdstalker. I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerdstalker on Twitter. Welcome. This is a uh, what episode number twenty six of Nerdstalker. Seven, seven, 27, seven. 27. I never get that right, dude. Of uh, dude. of the uh, Nerdstalker uh, Tech Week uh, podcast here, where we talk about all the coolest things in tech that we think are cool, anyways. Uh, and uh, I'm here with my friend here, my cohort. Yes, I'm Social Greg, a.k.a. Greg Voria, or Greg Voria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, whatever works. So anyway, <laughs> man, uh, the, <laughs> how you doing? It's been right. a while. Yeah, yeah, man. Good week. A lot of, uh, a lot of super interesting stuff. Yeah. Hey, Ad Tech this week, San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. So, I like your hat. What's that hat, Greg? Hey, Yumuri Giants. It's, uh, oh, that's baseball right. Baseball season's coming. <laughs> Going to Japan. Tokyo Giants That's for right. the rest of us. St. Colors. St. Colors is SF Giants, so right I'm on. happy. Right on. <laughs> Go Ducks. <laughs> Go Shows you what I know about Ducks. baseball, huh? <laughs> That's okay, man. No, it's all right. It's all right. You know a lot more than me in other things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> anyway, let me lead you into let me lead you into the other new article there. Cool. What is this about? How serious is Facebook about search? Yeah. So uh, thanks to uh, Greg Sterling, I believe this one came from uh, Search Engine Land. Uh, fascinating, fascinating story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so about right. two about two dozen Facebook engineers led by a former uh, Google engineer named Lars Rasmussen uh, are working on an improved search engine, say two people familiar with the project within Facebook. Uh, they did not want to be mm. named because the company's in this quiet period you know, prior to the IPO. Uh, the goal, they say, is to help users yeah. better sift through the volume of content that members create on Facebook, such as status updates and the articles, videos, and other information across the web that okay. uh, that people like using Facebook's omnipresent thumbs up button, right? Um, so what they're saying is better site search would increase query volumes. There's no question that an improved search okay. capability would benefit Facebook in several ways. It would encourage more search activity among users who would be rewarded with a better experience, creating a self-reinforcing cycle. It would also create a pay-per-click ad opportunity. So, cha-ching. Uh, that cha is probably <laughs> too lucrative for Facebook to ignore. Duh. Uh, Facebook doesn't need to challenge <laughs> Google directly in web search. You know, everyone always asks, oh, what about web search? You know, uh, Google. Uh, but they don't They don't really need to interface, uh, interact with them directly, uh, take on Google head-on. Uh, improving search on the Facebook site wouldn't be anywhere as difficult as general web search um, it would be okay. also be welcomed by advertising and end users of course provided there was a pay there were pay-per-click opportunities right and uh the writer almost guarantees some sort of paid search advertising on facebook is uh, on the roadmap you know uh, according okay. to to uh, a business week article using comscore data uh, facebook users performed 336 million search queries in february uh, if facebook fixed Search, that number would immediately go up and could translate into hundreds of millions of dollars in new annual oh, really? revenue for the company that is not that is still on the table. So um, really, really interesting. I've always wondered, what do you think about Facebook search, Greg? Well, it, well the only reason I use it is for finding friends. Yeah. Right? But, but I noticed exactly. that uh, That's recently the right over answer. the last... Yeah. Well, yeah, over the last year, I, I get these Bing searches, you know, yeah. they can't find any of my that's friends, right? right? That's and right. that that's kind of interesting, I thought. Uh, but, you know, quite frankly, worthless in what I'm trying to look for. So, Greg, why don't you tell us about a uh, Japanese court tells uh, Google to stop search <laughs> autocomplete in Japan? Uh, yeah. What's it, happening? I, you know, this comes from Social Greg's amazing lawsuits file. Anyway, oh. this is from uh, Mashable's publishing partner, Geeko System. Ooh, um, I like that. You know, yeah, you like that? Uh, a report from Mainichi Daily News, which is a um, fairly popular news, a daily news uh, 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 newspaper in Japan. Right. Uh, Japanese court has ordered Google to shut down its autocomplete feature in Japan after a man took a complaint to court and that said that autocomplete feature was casting him in a negative light. What? Now, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. The man's name was not revealed, though. The complaint said that the autocomplete uh. coupled his name with over 10,000 negative words, wow. and it's negatively affecting his career. What? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but people are dissing him in the in the office, you know, hey, let's, let's, let's look up this guy's name. Okay. Anyway, uh, 
Well, for taking the case to court, the man reportedly contacted Google and asked them to dissociate the negative words with his name, but Google declined his request, stating that the autocomplete association did not violate his privacy as the associations aren't made intentionally but mechanically. Well, that was pretty much and as one might imagine, Google is uh, choosing not to shut down <laughs> the autocomplete feature, stating that the company is situated in the United States and does not have to oblige with Japanese law. So do you find that, I, that type of like almost, because that's almost like a kind of a censorship friendly type of law passes. Does that type of litigation pass in Japan or, or is this sort of out of the norm? I think it's out of the norm. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that they they have the same problem that we have in this country is dealing some of this kind of like what I call uh, web tech litigation that's yeah. coming out a lot now. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I I know we didn't we didn't we didn't uh, put on our podcast about the man you know on uh, on on Google Maps or you know oh, uh, sure. peeing right the French guy right yeah, yeah, so but right. you know but I I just. You know, I, I always get really kind of fascinated with how people make arguments about certain things that they're doing electronically now in the media, right. you know, with, with something that's very common like Google search, right? Sure, sure. And, you know, 98% of all searches, I think, uh, originate with Google search, right? Right, right. So, you know, and, you know and it's, it's funny, it's, too. I mean, people do that, you know, Brad Pitt is a type of search right in google and then you get all kinds of like you could get all kinds of disparaging stuff you know about yeah, someone yeah, and that type yeah. of thing and it's just i don't you yeah. know yeah let's a, move on to the next one uh, research in motion dead i can't believe it right right <laughs> it's, this is a really another really fast i think i think all my stories are fascinating but this one uh they are fascinating just mine no sir uh but this one's really interesting because you see sort of like again the the death of well almost it seems like the impending death of a, of a super successful company that was a front runner uh we could talk about yahoo later uh and and uh, sort of what's happened here <laughs> by by an insider sort of an inside reporter with some insider sources too uh jonathan mm. s geller of uh, boy genius report yeah he says he's claiming mm. that research in motion is effectively dead so uh this is a company that used this is his case here this is a company that used to make users choose between a device with wi-fi and no gps or GPS and no Wi-Fi, just to have two products <laughs> on the market instead of one. So you see this sort of recurring absurdity sort of happen, right? This is the company that refused to take the consumer market seriously for a number of years. Oh this my gosh. is the company that couldn't see the future when it was right in front of them. Uh, what's so interesting Ooh, is that Rim ouch. has actually started to implement most of what... Um, so what, they, what they'd printed before was an open letter uh, from a Rim employee with all these points a long time ago, a while ago, uh, of what mm, the company right, was doing right, wrong, right, and, and sure enough, these, right. you know the company has did all those things wrong and has tried to remedy all those, all, quite a few of those things. So, um, you, you know, uh, the company isn't releasing. Uh, so, what's so interesting is that Rim has actually started to implement most of what the open letter said the company should do. The company isn't releasing the BlackBerry 10 until it's happy with it. The end user has. Uh, been more of a focus. The company has gotten rid of a number of executives, and the dual CEO structure is gone. Unfortunately, it's not enough. RIM has a fundamental problem with uh, what the company can offer and what the company can do best. Uh, RIM, C in fact, uh, RIM, C the current CEO Thornton Hines, and forgive me if I'm butchering his name, s he even stated uh, the other uh, a few days ago uh, during the company's earning call that RIM's best-in-class enterprise integration, security, and push email are no longer a huge selling point for the company. Duh. Uh, <laughs> I, in, in fact, Pete, you know, if you if you think about it, you know, everyone wants a touch phone now, right? A touch screen and not these keyboard yeah. kind of things for the vast majority. So what what's, the writer's also saying is that the iPhone 3GS and even prepaid Android smartphones uh, are a better option for the majority of people in the market. And I said iPhone right. 3GS here, people. Uh, average selling prices have uh, RIM's uh, average selling prices have taken a nosedive since the company's products can't compete on features only price. Um, the so. competitors like Hu Huawei, or forgive me, I'm butchering that name, and others have seized this Huawei. opportunity. Yeah. There you go. Have, okay. They've seized the, seized the opportunity to introduce lower price Android smartphones, right? So they're even getting creamed yeah. there, too, by these companies that are much better at doing that discount kind of phone thing. 
The company is considering ditching their system access fees for all carriers. This amounts to more than a billion dollars in revenue each quarter for RIM, but the company thinks it might be a way to drive Blackboard BlackBerry 7 sales before the BlackBerry 10 finally hits the market. I see. So I see. this would be a radical move for them because this is like a bread and butter type of thing. Um, but right. and, and it'd help them right. in the short term, but it wouldn't help them in the long term by any means. And in fact, it would, all I really do is buy the company some time to try to get the BlackBerry 10 out the door um, until it can figure out what, what it's really going to do. So uh, a while back, Boy Genius uh, report, uh, exclusively reported in January mm. that RIM mm. was pushing the sale of a uh, part or in t- or the entire company to Samsung. Uh, those talks were real. RIM uh, has talked with a bunch of companies about licensing its software and operating system, licensing uh, BlackBerry Messenger, sort of their their gold their gold nugget there, uh, licensing the company's mm-hmm. network infrastructure, and even selling different parts of RIM flat out. Uh, the RIM, he says, the RIM we know is dead. The company has twelve to fifteen months until it's either acquired or broken into pieces and sold for parts. Uh, uh, he's not even sure why the company still plans to launch the BlackBerry 10 uh, to smartphones at this point. Oh, my gosh. Oh so my a gosh. very bold statement, but I, I tend to agree. So, well, Greg, well, man, Bowerhead. do not track. <laughs> FTC calls on Congress firms to protect consumer privacy and tinfoil hat. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, you know, I, this comes from uh, one of my followers, A Broader View, um, and uh, I saw that on Twitter. Thank you for that. Um, from Info Security, um, the Federal Trade Commission and FTC has issued a detailed report that calls on Congress to consider enacting consumer privacy legislation and on businesses to adopt best practices to protect consumer privacy. So it's a 73-page FTC report called um, Protecting Consumer Privacy in the Era of Rapid Change, as you just <laughs> Pointing out in the mobile market, <laughs> yeah. And so basically, it prods Congress to enact a general privacy legislation, data security, and and breach notification legislation, and 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 data data broker legislation. I mean, wow. Holy shit! Wow. But uh, the the final report also calls on companies to handling consumer data to implement recommendations for protecting privacy including privacy by design simplified choice and and greater transparency i mean this is kind of i it's funny how it's all kind of you know took off after the white house kind of mentioned that maybe we should have something like this right Mm. um Mm. but uh Another, uh, Helen A. S. Popkin from uh, Technolog uh, from MSNBC also said that the Federal Trade Commissioner, Julie Brill, in her speech on opening um, a forum on Data Privacy Day, federal, she mentioned that even though the event was streamlined by social network, which I thought was kind of funny in conjunction with the National Cybersecurity Council, mm-hmm. kind of you know, called Facebook out in her speech uh, you know, mm-hmm. by basically saying um, – you know, reasonably safeguarding consumer information is critical to an, mm-hmm. a trusted online marketplace. And mm-hmm. so um, our enforcement actions in the privacy area is also called to industry to put important privacy principles into practice. Yeah. And Facebook and Google learned this the hard way. And, yeah. and path, I, right? You know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and path and, and, you know, whoever else is going to come down, right. <laughs> you know. Sure. And, yeah, you know, you and I had talked about how, we we're not really keen on getting government to enforce this because they always do something wrong at the end, yeah, right? It, yeah. It's also too controlling, or they don't account for anything that that is very practical. So it costs all these companies millions and millions and maybe even billions of dollars to go implement some of these things that they yeah, want now. Yeah. And um, I'm just kind of surprised, uh, not surprised, but I think. We do need some some regulation. Mm-hmm. How much? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's it's one it's thing beyond... when you're like this giant company like Facebook, where you have like total. Con- I mean, really, yeah. it, they're the only game in town, really, in in that sort yeah, of right. respect and in, in what they right. do. Path is like a sliver, right? I mean, we can leave Path without much of a much a concern. But so right. I can almost understand the legislation part. I mean, you have to be so careful about this stuff. Um, hmm. where they say something, yeah, if if you're going to take someone's address book without them knowing and then share it with everyone, right. you better tell them or better yet, don't do it, right, kind of thing. And, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see where it, 
one thing can lead to the next thing, right? Is the scary thing is that, yeah, then they start meddling with startup businesses even more saying you can't do this and that. That's when it gets kind of, you know, troublesome. Right, right, right. The, well, I, I think for us, the consumer, right, until we get burned, I think we're in that mode right now. And until we get burned, mm -hmm. we really don't really care, it seems. Yeah. Um, it seems like we're indifferent to it all, right? Until we get that, you know, yeah. our, you know, our online privacy or ID stolen, then we say, oh, man, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, yeah. we're always happy just using these devices and, 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 and the apps that are on them to, to just do whatever we feel like, right? So anyway, let's go to the next uh, article, Airbnb and other sites owe San Francisco City hotel tax? Yeah, what? Isn't, isn't this crazy? So me and Greg, just before the show, we kind of stumbled on this story on, on SF Gate, and thanks to uh, mm -hmm. John mm -hmm. Cote for for writing this too. Yeah. So the message that uh, this this is one of the San Francisco representatives. The message that quote yeah. the message that Airbnb was sending was that tourists do not don't need to pay their fair share. Uh, this was said by Aaron mm -hmm. Peskin, who's the chairman of the local Democratic Party here in San Francisco. Uh, quote, which means that those of us who live here are getting taxed more for services that they impact. Uh, the treasurer's <laughs> office said its regulation issued Tuesday was simply a clarification of the law, which requires anyone who rents out a guest room to pay the city's roughly 15% transient occupancy tax, commonly referred to as the hotel tax. Um, uh. The tax is 14% plus a 1% or 1.5% fee for improving tourism districts. Uh, there's an exception okay. for rooms that are less than 30 bucks a day or 100 bucks per week. Uh, quote, oh, we're not changing the law, said Greg Cato, policy, uh, policy and legislative manager for the treasurer tax collector. Quote, we're simply explaining existing law, unquote. Uh, hotel, ma mm. hotel tax matters have been contentious in this city for years, most recently in a ballot box fight in November of 2010 between uh, competing measures that, among other things, would have closed a loophole that allowed online travel companies that resell rooms to pay the hotel tax at a discounted rate. Uh, voters rejected them both. The city has also been wow. embroiled in lawsuits with online travel companies like Expedia and Hotwire, um, who claim they are not subject to San Francisco hotel occupancy tax. Uh, there are similar legal battles in other cities across the country. Um, sure. Sure. So, so we we see this sort of trend of you know broke cities, uh, trying to to get yes. every nickel and dime they can to everyone, and then on the flip side too, you know we hear in uh, the Bay Area and actually across and around the world, uh, want uh, sort of free open business without uh, the meddling right. again of right. the government right reaching in and 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 taking taking their hard work. So we don't want to stifle anything. Well, wow. you know, it, it's it, it's funny coming from a, a, a tech capital of the world like San Francisco, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, really. Uh, we're, we're, it's also sort of in the ethos, you know, for the, the community to pay, you know, uh, t traditionally higher taxes too here as well. So it's, right, it's, right. it's a real trip, man. Oh, absolutely. And think about, oh, what about the car share guys? They're gonna go after them next, right? Right. Moves. Right. <laughs> yeah, or renting out your uh, your tools and stuff like that from your house. You know? Yeah, I hear that a lot. And... You know? Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, we could go and, down and I... the slippery slope. <laughs> oh, then it's the garage yeah, and, sales. And, and, well, and that's why we're supporting that one event. We're gonna talk later in the podcast yeah, yeah, yeah. why why this probably this this um these tax chasers are are are, are trying to make the make the budget for the schools and everybody else so oh man so anyway speed round that was a good story speed round speed round <laughs> <laughs> i guess i should go <laughs> anyway <laughs> you want me to lead it off you're here, on my deck friend? you're on deck my friend okay i'm on deck okay uh well there's tweet seats a special section for theaters for people who tweet <laughs> so cool, I, man. Uh, this comes from bid Re rebels uh diana Ab awesome. adams of bid rebels really kind of i love that i love their articles they're really pretty fun so do you tweet update your facebook status uh text pin or even check your email while in the movie theater no not me not me so um you know and 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 you know when that that bright 
smartphone display comes on, you know, mm. your face is lit up, and they could see you in the whole theater, right? Uh, <laughs> so, uh. so, so anyway, many of the theaters are now featuring a section called Tweet Seats, and they're the old-fashioned smoking section in restaurants, right? Mm. And it's a section of the uh, theater designated specifically for annoying people like maybe myself, <laughs> who pollute everyone's experience with light from their smartphones. <laughs> I thought it was just great to bring up in the speed round, because I thought... You know, it's kind of the sign of the times, right? We were dealing with smoking 20 years ago, maybe. <laughs> now we're dealing with tweeting now. <laughs> I Damn, thought it was kind of cool to bring that one up. Hey, what do you have next, man? Ah, uh, let's see. What do I got here? I got the Lumia 900 was released uh, recently here. This ah, is yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, new yeah, Windows yeah. phone, actually. This is the flagship uh, phone, top-of-the-line phone, I believe, that's uh, supposed to save Windows phone platform. Uh, there have been a lot of reviews mm. that I've seen about it, and... Um, Although it is a beautifully designed phone, uh, according to right. you know The Verge and Walt Mossberg and uh, uh, I forget who it was uh, tear it apart whatever dot com, um, mm. the, mm. the they looking at the interiors of the phone, it's really cheap sort of components uh, and and not the greatest made type of thing. There's a sort of a pop out sim thing at the bottom that uh, doesn't okay. quite go back in flush when you when you kind of put it back in. Um, mm. <clears throat> Uh, it's like an eight megapixel, I think, uh, camera or something like that. Uh, but but the okay. camera itself, on when you are using the camera on screen, there's sort of like a haze, like a halo, kind of yellow or discolored type of halo. Unfortunately. Um, oh no. Uh, it's it's pretty responsive though. You know, it's it's fairly responsive, uh, and it's got the Windows Phone operating system, which is quite nice. Um, but yes, you know, it's adequate. Um, <clears throat> Problem is, uh, you know, you have uh, Apple and uh, top-of-line Android phones to contend with, right? Uh, no. So, you know, this was the Hail Mary pass for for Windows Phone, and it it doesn't look like uh, it's gonna be it's gonna measure up. And I'm actually going out on a limb and saying that um, <clears throat> I don't think Windows Phone is gonna be around much longer. Actually, um, is my prediction. Oh, maybe Rim could go. <laughs> maybe Rim could go to that operating system. Yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. everyone's like, yeah. It seems like all the all the losers are trying to make partnership with Microsoft <laughs> right now. You know, <laughs> all so, the losers. Yeah, you because know, oh, they're, they're pumping so much money into things right now, which is which is oh. awful. It's unfortunate too, because I really want a Windows Phone to, yeah. to, to be a contender. Uh, this this doesn't look like it's going to be it, which is too bad. Okay. So how about right. you, Greg? Well, well, let's go to the winner. <laughs> uh, half of U.S. homes own Apple products. Uh, this is via uh, Jody uh, Gralnick from CNBC.com. Uh, according to CNBC's All American Economic Survey, half of all U.S. households own at least one Apple product. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Um, there are more than 55 million U.S. homes with at least one iPhone, iPad, iPod, or Mac computer, according to CNBC's All-American Survey, wow. Economic Survey. Um, and there, at least one in ten homes that aren't currently in that group will plan to join it with within the next year. So. Wow. Um, the survey kind of let's hear some see some highlights from the survey. They te- uh, Apple buyers tend to be male, college educated, and younger. I don't know how much younger, but younger, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, let's say that, and uh, the more money you earn, the more Apple products you're likely to own. Twenty-eight uh, percent of those making less than thirty thousand only own one, and uh, compared to seventy-seven percent of those make making more than seventy-five thousand own at least three. Wow. So. That just goes to show you, you know, Apple's the winner, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now, Let's speed round for me. Yeah. Selling used Android yes. phones poses huge identity theft risk, uh, experts say. Uh, mm. So this is from Boy Genius Report. Um, yeah. So there was a security firm that what they did is they they wiped Android phones, you know, completely wiped them or whatever, and they were able to recover uh, data still, no matter how much you <gasps> wipe this thing. Even like DoD no. wipes and all kinds of stuff. As, as much as you could wipe yeah. uh, on these Android phones. They could still recover data. So what they're saying is uh, they're recommending you do not sell your phones, and you'd probably be better off actually putting a drill literally through the logic board of the phone and through your SIM card. I love it. And uh, love quite it. literally drilling a hole through it, you know, um, um. To, uh, to, for that, for your 
information right. safety. Right. Also, just want to throw in there that Instagram now is also available on Android. As oh, all of yeah, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the yeah, joke is, well, of downloads. yeah, yeah, like a million plus down- downloads in in what a day or two or something insane. Right, uh, right. But the joke now on uh, all all the Instagram users, the uh, current ones are saying now you're going to get a whole bunch of really ugly uh, uh, pictures on Instagram now, right? Really badly taken pictures because oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. we oh. are the ghetto of, of uh, smartphones, right? Ouch. <laughs> Android Ouch. users. Ouch. Ouch. So some of the uh, downer, real quick downer news is Yahoo lays off 2000. They announced uh, officially today uh, that, I know. that this Bummer. is going to happen. So uh, we're so uh, we're sorry to see that happen. Uh, now for some more uplifting uh, news, Microsoft announces their the release of Star Wars for Connect. So if you ever wanted to uh, look like, remember the Star Wars kid on the YouTube meme uh, video where he was like yeah. in, in the room with the broom and then they ended up making lightsabers out of his thing? That can be you now. <laughs> tip, tip time, time, tip time, tip time, tip time. Okay, this is Social Greg's Drippler Tip of the Week. Uh, be- they benchmarked the new iPad A5X versus the iPad Two's A5 versus huh? the Tegra 3, and I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, okay. This is from 9 to 5 Mac. Uh, Jordan uh, Khan. Cool. So, uh, as you know, um, uh, marketing chief of uh, Apple, um, Pete Schiller, claimed the new device's A5X processor with the quad-core graphics provided up to four times the graphics performance of the NVIDIA's Tegra 3 chip. Well, you know, the I. You know, that new benchmark data provided by IGN shows uh, iPad 2's A5 chip outperforms both the A5X and the Tegra 3 wow. uh, with the A5X improved graphics uh, you know, going largely towards powering the new iPad's uh, high-resolution retina yeah. display of yeah. 3.1 million pixels. I think sure. that's really where it was, right? Yeah. So the A5X shows a significant increase in performance over iPad 2 and, and Tegra 3 mm-hmm. devices only when the chip is not forced to power the retina display yeah, yeah. makes sense you know absolutely and uh, so anyway catch that um, that was a good tip just to see if you, you kind of what you know what, what you want to buy and and what you want to see but you know if you're you're okay with with that uh, you know performance tip you know you know get the get the new ipad so it's okay yeah. so anyway what's your tip man uh it's called pub my cal it instantly connects to <laughs> google pub calendar and allows you to so what this thing does is it allows you to choose a date range pick any of your calendars email a reader friendly synopsis of your events and automatically creates beautifully formatted emails. What's, nice. what's really neat is you, you log in with your Gmail account or your, your Google Calendar mm-hmm. account, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. to uh, pubmycal.com, and it connects this thing, and then it can select your different calendars that you've created, and then you can email that calendar in a really nice sort of formatted email, formatted way to whoever or a group of people or whatever. So uh, if they're not Gmail, I mean, sorry, uh, Google Calendar users, this is really helpful. So if you got a group or a club or, or something with some workmates or something like that, this could be mm. uh, a really mm. helpful thing if, if they don't have Google. Oh, that's Calendar really cool. If they don't want to have Google account. Oh no, I, very yeah. very nice. Uh, my company's my company's great uh, Google Apps user, so I think we'd love to see something like that. Yeah, so, yeah. Super oh, neat. great tip, man. So events great going tip, on, Greg. Man. What do we got going on? New tech. Well, we hey, we got SF New Tech, the what's the four one one event um, coming up on guess what four one one. That's a, a week from uh, today, and we got uh, on uh, April twenty fifth uh, the fourth SF New Tech Japan night, uh, where we actually had the semifinals last week, and we got cool. down to the final six. So it'll be kind of cool uh, to see that. Uh, so very nice. Right um, and um, talk about your event, the Taste yeah, of man. Potrero, benefiting yeah, the public school. Yeah, May 10th, uh, May 10th, May 10th, tasteofpotrero.com. Check us out. I'll put the URL down here, tasteofpotrero.com. Okay, uh, It's great. a great benefit for uh, Daniel Webster Elementary. Very, a very nice uh, high-end type of auction type of thing uh, where you can mm. taste from all these great restaurants and, and uh, wine right. places and stuff. Uh, so check it out. We'd love to get your support uh, for Daniel Webster Public School, tasteofpotrero.com. Tickets are on sale for the May 10th event. Also, if you want nice. to contribute stories to NerdStalker, please use the hashtag NRDSDK or check us out at NerdStalker.com where all our stuff is there. Um, please uh, just go the easy route. Just go to iTunes and sign up for our audio podcast or our video podcast and uh, give us a nice five-star rating. That would help us a lot. Or you could check us out on YouTube. Uh, check our channel. Do a search for NerdStalker TV and you will see all, all the good stuff there as well. Um, so I am Adolfo Ferranda, Adolfo at NerdStalker.com, and at NerdStalker on Twitter. Phew! And you? 
And I am Greg Valoria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, and I want to give a quick shout-out to a couple friends of mine, Haruko Ueno and uh, her mother, uh, Maiko Ueno, and they uh, took care of me yesterday by uh, cooking a great meal, and I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy. Nice. So anyway, I wanted to give them a shout-out on the podcast for that, and uh, anyway. Thanks for watching, everyone. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. All right. All right. Be careful out there.